Welcome to the Errol Jones Show on the HitRadioShow.com Reality Radio Network. Real people really talking about their reality. And now, let's join your host, Errol Jones. Okay, greetings everybody. This is Errol Jones on the Errol Jones Show. And we are happy to be launching or relaunching our show. Uh, we've been reluctant in the past to start the show because we knew that would become a job and we have to do it on a regular basis. But I will have some special guests on the line today that really prompted me to launch a little bit earlier than we had scheduled our, our initial launch to give these individuals opportunity to share some pretty interesting and I think vital information for of the community. Uh, the uh, guests are ones from University of Houston, one is from Rice University, and we also have a gentleman, Mr. Carl Davis, who is uh, who has been an advocate and a campaign manager for various campaigns around the city. And so, uh, Carl, why don't you go ahead on and introduce uh, introduce uh, your guests? Okay, great. Thank you, uh, uh, Errol Jones, for allowing us this opportunity to come on your show to talk about uh, this initiative that we working together on. I have tonight with me on the call uh, Mary Claire Neal, a Rice University student, Yusa and Yusa uh, Elogian, uh, who is a University Houston student. They are uh, two student activists who started organizing and came to the Third Ward community uh, because of the new development that's occurring in Third Ward. You may have heard that the uh, Rice Management is developing the ION, which is the site of the old Sears building on Maiden and Weaver. And uh, they have a 16-acre track that they will be developing. And when I say the ION, ION is going to become a, a tech startup. So when you think of tech startup, you think of Silicon Valley. So when you think of those things, you know that uh, there's going to be job opportunities, but then uh, whether it's uh, jobs, uh, we need to talk about affordable housing because we as African-Americans who's been enrooted in that community uh, since the early 1800s. So we feel that, that with the uh, development of the ION, the tech startup uh, will displace African-Americans who call, have called at home for over 100 and some odd years, about 150 some odd years. So we are concerned about that. and. Uh, Mary Neal and Yusa uh, and a group of Rice students came to us uh, about uh, their concerns about what was happening. It was right in our uh, backyard, but we hadn't really focused in on it. And I want to applaud them for bringing it to our attention and help us uh, raise the, the concerns of the community of displacement from the third of African Americans in Third War and the benefits of it. And one of the tools we are <laughs> Uh, working together on is trying to create a community benefits agreement. We have formed a coalition called the Houston Coalition for Equitable, Equitable Development uh, Without Displacement. And we have brought into that umbrella of coalition, uh, the Third Ward is Our Home, Emancipation Economic Development Council, my group, Houston Society for Change, the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats, Harris County, we have Houston Black American Democrats. We have the Northern Third Ward has joined the coalition. We also have Project Row House, uh, the FLCIO, just to name a few of the, those who are, and the communities of color. We bring in all communities of color because what is happening will be impactful for all uh, uh, African Americans who can benefit from it, whether it's from tech startups, with job opportunities, well it's for uh, affordable house, all those issues that uh, uh, are out there and we want to be at the table to discuss and create a community benefits agreement that will be beneficial. When I say beneficial, that uh, since we are moving from a retail, we become automation. So our kids and, and our uh, the people of our community need to be trained in those and have those opportunities. And I would like you know, to pass it on to Mary. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say I before like they to start. 
what I was going to say before they start, one of the things that made this interview most interesting to me is that these are young people stepping to the table to address community issues. And they're young people from diverse backgrounds stepping in to address community issues in the African-American community. And my strategy, if you've heard me on the radio and heard me on Facebook, seen me on Facebook, is basically community development through youth entrepreneurship, engaging young people like these two young people that are on the air with us today and getting them involved. In fact, they're coming to the table, getting us involved in community development. So, Mary, with that, uh, give us a little of your background and your spiel on this thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm a junior at Rice and I'm studying anthropology. I uh, heard about this development when it was first announced in April 2018. And just because I'm familiar with, you know, the area around the old Sears and the Fiesta, I, you know, I thought this seems a little ironic to me that, um, you know, I knew at that point there was the encampment where a lot of people live. And I thought there was all this talk about, you know, progress and um, shaping the economy and um, innovation and technology. And I was just thinking, like, I wonder what's going on there, what kind of conversations there are about the people that are already living there. Um, and Rice had said that they were going to work with community partners to make sure that this development reflects the historical character of the city and respects these local communities. Um, but we wanted to know exactly what they meant when they said that and who exactly they were talking to and whether that included the African-American history that was right next to them. Um, so that's why a couple of my classmates and I reached out to some of the third ward leaders like like Carl Davis and like um, Dr. Asada Richards, the Emancipation Economic Development Council, asking them what their relationship with Rice was and whether um, whether they were taking their concerns into account yet. And so what we learned from them was um, that without a substantial binding enforceable agreement like this, like a community benefits agreement, then we really, there was no guarantee that no matter what the developers, um, no matter what their intentions were, that this could be harmful to to the residents that are there, whether they're unhoused or housed or, uh, but especially renters and the African American community that's already being displaced. Now, now you're a student, you're a junior at Wright, and what's your major? Anthropology. Anthropology, okay, wow. Now, <laughs> what makes you think as a student, a young person, that you can make a difference on something like this? Well, I personally just kind of fell into it and learned a lot in the process about what it really means to work alongside these leaders. Um, but for me as a student, is that we, as especially as Rice students, because this development project, it's um, the people that fund Rice's endowment. And so they're paying for my financial aid. They're paying for everything I experienced there. And so everything about the returns from this investment straight into my education straight into what my degree means and so we have a very powerful voice when we all act together and we can speak straight to that um straight to rice management company straight to the board of trustees straight to president lebron um and when, once we we come together and decide this is important to us that that our degree doesn't come at the expense of these communities being displaced. That's something we can mobilize around. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Uh, Uissa, tell us yeah, about this, uh, yeah, and their involvement. Yeah, um, I uh, actually came on a little bit later in, in the story. Um, a mutual friend of okay. Mary Claire and, um, and my, uh, and I, uh, he named Jason Oliver, um, connected us because um, he had caught wind of what Mary Claire and the white students were doing, and he felt that um, with my background, with uh, a lot of organizing experience, uh, whether it be education policy, immigration, or civic education in general, um, he felt like I could uh, bring that ex expertise around and also um, get a lot of white -like students um, involved in the effort. And what's, what's your major? So I'm a marketing major. I'm a senior at the University of Houston, marketing major, and I'm an education minor. Okay, okay. And um, 
in case I didn't really catch it, why do you think you can make a difference on this project as a young person fresh out of college? <laughs> well, I'm a senior, so I'm I'm uh I'm still in there, but uh I um a couple a couple reasons. Um I I firmly believe that um everything that the that the I that rice management company wants to do is um I, I work on uh, issues that affect young people. That's the work that I normally do. I, I always say I focus on um, how young people experience power, pain, and pleasure in their communities. And I just feel like uh, gentrification is very much an existential threat um, to especially third ward young people, right? Third ward young people who um, have grown up in that in that environment and they want to be able to um, live there, right? Live where their parents live, live where their grandparents live, and on and on. So I, I, I because this has been a, such a longly held belief of mine that um, a lot of the a lot of the oppression that we see, um, if we focus on young people, um, we would dismantle a lot of it. Because I put, held that belief for so long, that's what kept me on um, and kept me going on this project. Um, hopefully, that answers your question. Uh, that was, hey, man, that answered a lot of my questions because I know I'm going to have to talk to you later on because we're walking on the same street. Uh, same with you, Mary, as an anthropologist. Uh, Carl, I understand there's a meeting coming up in the very near future. Tell us about the meeting. Yeah, the, uh, this will be our second meeting uh, community uh, for the coalition, and it will be held on Tuesday, December the 3rd at Wesley Chapel AME Church, which is located at, on 22 09 Emancipation Avenue, again at Wesley AME Church on Tuesday, December the 3rd at 2209 Emancipation Avenue at 6 p.m. And we're inviting the community out to, so we can share with them what a community benefit is. Also, we're uh, issuing a call out to other organizations of color uh, to uh, come into the coalition. So that we'll be one big boy. And one of the things, uh, uh, as I said earlier, uh, is even though it's right there uh, on the edge of Third Ward, that it will impact and can be beneficial for all African Americans. And one thing we have done is reach out to other uh, communities of color and brought that coalition in because we'd be one uh, stronger voice working together. And if we move forward together, we can achieve so much. And I think we are on that track to achieve so much because people are coming together. Organizations have been reaching out to us. As I said, uh, and as I listed the organization, the AFL-CIO, uh, Harris County has come on board. So that's a big uh, uh, piece for us too, because see, they can help us work with the job piece, the job training, all of those pieces of a puzzle so that we'll be able to train people from our respect the communities and, and give them the opportunity at those jobs. We also want to uh, uh, have the opportunity for second chance people so they can get their life back on track. You know, a lot of times when those things happen, everybody makes mistakes and those are serious mistakes, but they are trying to serve their time, pay their uh, penalty uh, for their mistakes. But how can they get back on track and live a fruitful life? And be a a uh, good citizen. Mm -hmm. So those um, are the things we're mm -hmm. thinking on. Uh -huh. When you're planning a project or a business, you always look at your your SWATs, your strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities, and and the threats. Um, let's just take each one of those so people can get a better idea of the overall process. What are some of the strengths of the uh, rice? Is it rice management company? You're right, yeah. Right, okay. Well, somebody speak to the strength of them coming in to do a project like this. Well, um, um, just, go ahead, um, Mary Claire. Yeah, well, with, with the third ward having the complete communities action plan, which is built on several other, you know, needs assessments and community plans, there's more than enough research, I think, on what the community needs are. And so we can pull straight from that and say, okay, people, people want employment in, in the healthcare sector. They're looking for jobs in, um, I forget, I know it was the healthcare sector was a big one. Um, people 
are worried about the loss of African American history. Um, people are worried about having to move out of their homes and um, people need more access to quality affordable groceries. So when we see um, when we see this development coming in, we can say, okay, like that's a lot of, that's a hundred million dollars going into just the construction of the first building, that innovation hub of the ION. And so those, those construction jobs is a huge opportunity um, to benefit people living in this area that need these jobs with living wages and benefits. Um, and so um, additionally with the Fiesta being part of Rice's property, um, we're uncertain about the fate of the fiesta, but it's not likely that it will remain a fiesta. So whatever takes its place, that's an opportunity for us to say, um, who is going to be providing those groceries and filling that niche? Because so many mm -hmm. of people who buy groceries from fiesta. Mm -hmm. uh, you whistle, why don't you handle um, the weaknesses? Uh, Claire, Mary Claire just handled the strengths and opportunities pretty good. Tell us some of the weaknesses. I'm gonna come back to you, Carl. With the uh, with mm -hmm. the threats, go ahead, USA. So the weaknesses like uh, on RMC side um, is that they have no prior history of ever working with any community outside of their university walls. Um, so they uh, so this is going to be a very much new experience for them, and that will affect um, how well we are um, able to work with them because um, often. Um, institutions of their size when they're first trying to start out with real genuine community um, engagement, um, they can tend to be hostile. Uh, and we would hope that that never happens with RMC. So um, as Mary Claire said, there, there's so much opportunity um, and so much knowledge out there that um, they can definitely work on this weakness um, really easily. Mm -hmm. Carl, the threat. Well, the uh, the threat would be uh, uh, communities uh, coming together as one voice uh, toward rights because this is a project they've planned, they released a master plan, and I'm sure they want everything to to move smoothly. But if we become we be, as we're coming, the coalition is becoming one voice. We become a bigger threat because the the louder we are, the the larger the our numbers are will be a threat to them as they move forward. So in order to be a good neighbor, I think they need to sit down with us and, and draft uh, a community benefits agreement so they can move forward. And then at the same time, both parties can work alongside each other and move forward in a equitable uh, way. Okay, okay. Um, those are very good answers. And uh, I really would like to follow up with this again before that meeting coming on the third, but I'm on the road right now. I'm gonna get with you, Carl. Uh, later and also uh, Mary Claire and US if you're still available too um, before the third and uh, we can do this a little bit more. Uh, have you been in touch with the uh, state representatives or uh, and or the uh, any pastors in the community and what's been the response? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, we had a, uh, a meeting on Wednesday, this past Wednesday uh, with Rice Management. They reached out to me about, they'd heard about what was going on and then we invited one of the executive directors of the ION to our meeting on November the 12th. And they reached out to me about uh, a meeting with them to have a discussion. But between the 12th and uh, our meeting on the 20th, uh, we were kind of on a conference call flushing out uh, our plans and how do we move forward when it was brought to our attention that it was they had released their master plan and they were also building a garage, constructing a garage right there where the Sears Automotive location was, a 10-story mm -hmm. garage, and they were mm -hmm. requesting a variance. Well, uh, we got busy uh, and sent letters to the planning department, so we were successful in getting that variance delayed to December the 5th. But we had okay. already scheduled our meeting for December the 3rd. Well, on our meeting on uh, November the 20th, I had a faith leader in the meeting. I had uh, Senator Miles representative in the meeting. I had Commissioner Ellis representative in the meeting. I had a planner and also had uh, one of the um, planning commissioners along with Coalition of Black Democrats represented and US, which is a student in the meeting. So there were so many voices in that meeting. Uh, 
sharing with them that we are serious and we're committed uh, to move forward with the uh, toward a community benefits agreement. Okay, uh, you know what I do. Uh, how can I help further with this project? Well, uh, we welcome you. Uh, first of all, you have several platforms. We can uh, need to help us publicize what we're trying to do, uh, and we love for you. Uh, the individual or uh, organization that you work with. I know you work with pulling together that entrepreneur piece. If you bring those right. to the table, so we can all sit down and talk uh -huh, and join the coalition. On December the 3rd, we, we're still looking for coalition members. You know, we haven't set that down because the more we uh, co uh, members, organization we have working with the coalition, the bigger our boards will be, and we welcome you. I will be on a flight uh, on my way back to Houston on the 3rd. Um, but uh, anything after that, I'll be more than happy to uh, participate in. One more time, tell us the name of the group uh, that you are representing, and then re remind us one more time where the meeting is going to be held on December 3rd. Okay, the Houston Coalition for Equitable, Equitable Development Without Displacement will be held on Tuesday, December the 3rd at Wesley Chapel AME Church 2209 Emancipation Avenue at 6 p.m. Okay. And listen, all three of you, I really thank you for coming on board. Um, I'm going to end up posting this uh, show um, pretty soon so others can hear it. And I'm going to use that Facebook platform in, in particular to make sure we get the word out. Uh, Mary Claire, thank you, future anthropologist. <laughs> and uh, uh, or you, you, Issa. Uh, marketing uh, gentlemen so I, and, and educator, I definitely have to talk to you about some things on this youth project because you guys are doing exactly what my work is really all about, community development through youth entrepreneurship. So I really appreciate your work. I want to give you all uh, kudos uh, for doing that. Any last Thank remarks you. you would like to make? You're welcome. Any um, last remarks I, I you would like to make? I definitely want to echo what Carl said. Um, everyone really um, come out. There's a space for everyone to get into making really the first ever community benefits agreement in the state of Texas. Uh, so this is a big time. This is a big moment. And everyone has a place in uh, making a brighter future for third ward and other communities of color. So come on out. Yeah, it's, it's really important that the, the residents are there through every step of the process, giving their visions. I said, you know, I mentioned how we have the needs assessments and we don't need anyone asking anyone else anymore, like, what do you need? But we do need people saying, what do you envision? And what, what do you see in this project that you can take advantage of that you, um, and also filling in just knowledge that we have from living in this community and knowing, you know, what are the, what are the black owned businesses that are already doing these jobs that, um, that can have a role in the innovation district? or um you know that could reach out to their communities and bring more people in we need all those people involved uh carl last word yes well we want first of all we want to thank you for this opportunity to share with you uh as we move forward to uh pull together a community benefits agreement with uh rights management in the ion uh, development and we know that uh Coming together as one will be a stronger voice than one by themselves. And we want to thank you for this opportunity. We look forward to working with you. And as Mary Claire said, that you know, it's an opportunity. We want to uh, revigorate re uh, the old Emancipation Avenue. Well, Emancipation Avenue, which you probably remember as Dowling Avenue, which is a bustling right. with uh, black businesses. So we want to bring economics back to the community. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, lastly, I have to say, you all have a happy Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. This has been the Errol Jones Show. We hope to continue and will continue to bring fresh, innovative minds and ideas to the table, uh, being able to unite the community, the uh, elders in the community, along with the fresh young minds that are coming out of college, and even those that are not going to college but still have good minds. We want to pull these two entities together and foster more beneficial community development. I love the idea that was just expressed about a community benefits agreement. I love that and we'll be following up on it. This is Earl Jones. It's been a wonderful evening. You all have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Errol Jones Show on the hitradioshow.com reality radio network. <laughs>